Welcome to a Rock Science feature video. In this tutorial, we will demonstrate how to introduce profiles and boreholes into a model with a simple surface excavation, consisting of a trench, located near a circular tunnel, and a distributed load directly above the tunnel. A staged analysis is performed by first excavating the tunnel, then the trench, and finally, adding the load. Two boreholes are present, one located on either side of the trench. The borehole profiles have three layers, with three different materials. This tutorial will guide you through project settings, defining boreholes, entering geometry, assigning materials, adding a distributed load, meshing the model, defining boundary conditions, computing the model, and analyzing results using interpret. Let's get started. Select File, Recent Folders, Tutorial Folder. Select the Profiles and Boreholes initial file. In this file, material properties have already been defined, such that you can proceed with defining the boreholes. Select Analysis, Project Settings. In the Project Settings dialog, select the Stages tab. Enter Number of Stages equals 4. Name your stages accordingly. To enable the use of soil profiles, select the Soil Profile tab. Check the box entitled Use Soil Profile. Click OK to close the dialog. Let's begin by defining the profile extents, located in the Profile Options pane on the left side of the modeling interface. Enter the following parameters. Select Properties, Define Materials. Note that the initial file already has the material properties defined. These materials will be used when constructing the boreholes. Select Profile, Borehole Editor. In the Edit Boreholes dialog, select the green plus symbol to add a borehole. Enter the following parameters for borehole number one. In the Edit Borehole dialog, select the green plus symbol to add a second borehole. Enter the following parameters for borehole number two. Select the Geometry Workflow tab. Select Boundaries, Add External. Select the Add External as Window option. Click to select the top left corner of the soil profile boundary and drag to highlight the entire soil profile. Finish the selection by clicking the bottom right corner of the profile. The external boundary has now been created. Let's add the circular tunnel. Select Boundaries, Add Excavation. Right-click the mouse and select the circle option from the pop-up menu. Select the center and radius option and enter number of segments equals 60. Select OK. Enter 0, 0 in the prompt line, and the circular excavation will be created. Let's add the rectangular trench. Select Boundaries, Add Excavation. Enter the following coordinates. Press C to close the boundary. Both excavations have now been created. Select the Materials and Staging Workflow tab. Select Properties, Assign Properties. The tunnel will be excavated in Stage 2 and the trench in Stage 3. Make sure the Stage 2 tab is selected. Select the Excavate button in the Assign dialog. Left-click inside the circular tunnel, ensuring to select both selections of material. The contents of the tunnel will now appear white, indicating that the tunnel has been excavated. Select the Stage 3 tab. Left-click the mouse inside the rectangular trench, ensuring to select all three sections of material. The elements in the trench will disappear, indicating that it is excavated. Let's verify the assignments by selecting each Stage tab in turn and inspecting the model. Select Stage 1. There should be no excavations present. Select Stage 2. Only the tunnel should be excavated. Select Stage 3. Both the trench and the tunnel should now be excavated. 
Select the Loading Workflow tab. Let's add a uniform distributed load to the ground surface segment above the tunnel. Select Loading, Distributed Load, Add Uniform Load. In the Add Distributed Load dialog, enter a magnitude of 20. Select the Stage Load checkbox and select the Stage Factors button. In the Stage Factors dialog, enter Factor equals 0 for Stages 1, 2, and 3, and Factor equals 1 for Stage 4. Select OK in both dialogs. Let's place the load on the external boundary, above the circular tunnel excavation. In the prompt window, enter the following coordinates. Press Enter to add the load. For most problems involving a ground surface, it is recommended to use a gravity stress field. Select Loading, Field Stress. Select the option for Use Actual Ground Surface and select OK. Select the Mesh Workflow tab. Select Mesh, Mesh Setup. Enter the following mesh parameters. Select Discretize, then Mesh. Close the dialog. Select the Restraints Workflow tab. Since this is a surface excavation model, we must specify that the ground surface is a free surface. This is done using the free option in the toolbar or the displacements menu. Select displacements free. Use the mouse to select the segments representing the ground surface. This can be done by selecting each segment individually or by drawing a selection window as shown. Press enter. The triangular pin symbols should now be gone from the ground surface, indicating that it is free to move without restraint. Let's now specify the left and right edges of the external boundary as fixed in the X direction only, and the lower edge as fixed in the Y direction only. Select Displacements, Restrain X. Use the mouse to select the left and right edges of the external boundary. Press Enter. Select Displacements, Restrain Y. Use the mouse to select the bottom edge of the external boundary. Press Enter. Select Displacements, Restrain XY. Right-click the mouse and select Pick by Boundary Nodes from the pop-up menu. This will change the mode of restraint application from boundary segments to boundary nodes. Select the lower left and lower right vertices of the external boundary. Press Enter. Triangular pin symbols now replace the roller symbols at these vertices. Next, we are going to compute the model. Select Analysis, Compute. Let's view the results and interpret. Select Analysis, Interpret. To view the effect of the load on total displacement, the reference stage must be set to Stage 3, the stage before the addition of the load. First, select Data, Stage Settings. Set the reference stage to 3, Excavate Trench. Press OK. Select Total Displacement from the drop-down menu. It is apparent that the load has caused significant displacement, particularly in the top two soil layers. Set the reference stage back to not used. Select Strength Factor from the drop-down menu. Based on the Strength Factor contours for this preliminary elastic analysis, it is evident that there is failure in the material surrounding the tunnel. The orange contours surrounding the tunnel are less than one, which indicates material failure. It is recommended that additional plastic analyses be performed, along with the addition of support for the trench and the tunnel. Let's review what we covered in this tutorial. We constructed the model by adding boreholes to create a soil profile. Additionally, we added a tunnel, trench, and surface load. We meshed the model and set the appropriate boundary conditions. Finally, we analyzed the results, including total displacement and the strength factor, using the interpret program. This concludes the Profiles and Boreholes tutorial. Please visit our online help section for an extensive collection of tutorials. Thank you for watching our feature video. Please check our playlist for more videos and demos.